underneath this beautiful bentwood cover is a Singer 99K13 that was born on November 28th, 1928, making it about, uh, going on about 85 years old. And um, it really is a turnkey package that we're offering. It, uh, it's extremely portable uh, because of the case, really a quilter's dream, and uh, we even have the key so that you can lock the case as well uh, for carrying purposes. And underneath this cover, I'm going to go ahead and lift it up, housed inside is a gorgeous machine, and also on the inside cover, let me move this out of the way, included, if I can rotate it around, I'll test my spinning skills here, is an original Singer oiling can as well. And uh, all of this fits neatly inside of this bent wood cover. I'm going to set this cover down. Now what can I tell you about the 99K13? Uh, first of all, they're extremely rare, much more rare than a 99 or 99K. This is actually the first one in all of the sewing uh, machine restoration that we do that we've come across. Um, and it has so many nice features. I'm really kind of looking forward to demonstrating some of them as we go through the video. But the first thing I'm going to say is I really see it as a step up uh, from the featherweight. Now the featherweight has some advantages, but it also has disadvantages. When you're doing uh, quilting with it, you can do the piecing of the quilting, but doing an actual full-size quilt is pretty doggone tough for two reasons. One is the harp space on a featherweight is almost an inch shorter than this 99K13. The vertical harp space is also about an inch shorter and you're dealing with a motor on a featherweight that's only a 0.4 compared to this 99K13 that has a 0.6 amp motor. So the power, the workspace, really do make it a much more practical machine for overall quilting and even heavy duty sewing as you'll see in some of the other videos. Let me, let me, first of all, as we move into this machine, I'm going to demonstrate actual bobbin winding. Uh, what you would do is you would obviously put your spool of thread on top, come across through this one thread guide right here. You then come across the machine through this other thread guide right here on the front. And uh, I'm not skilled enough to... Uh, to actually wind it while it's on the machine, I kind of cheat a little bit, so I always give it a little bit of a pre-start on that bobbin. And then you're simply going to take up the slack a little bit, kind of come over the top of this uh, thread distributor, and then you just drop it down right onto that bobbin. And there is a little catch peg, I don't know if you just saw it kind of slide in, so that it's nice and snug, you're not going to get any extra movement when you're winding the bobbin. Then sim simply push this down to engage it to the hand wheel. And uh, the other thing I didn't mention at the outset of this introductory video is the other very cool feature about this 99K13 is unlike other 99s, which are controlled by a foot control, they really wanted to offer uh, greater flexibility uh, and control by adding a very nice feature on this machine with a knee control. You can see, and it may be difficult for the camera to capture it, but right here is a little plug-in point for this. And all you do is simply slide it in the front and then rotate it down. And it's naturally, uh, you can't see it through the camera, but it's naturally going to be on a little bit of an angle so that you will slide the machine a little bit further uh, to the right so that you can comfortably maneuver things uh, with, the, with the sewing machine. You can also operate it by just pushing it with your hand as well, like I'm going to do right now for winding this bobbin. And you can see the movement as it goes right and left. It really does, in my opinion, a spectacular job of getting that thread much more even on the, uh, the bobbin so that you don't get uh, stitch quality issues. All right, that's enough, you get the idea. All right, for the rest of the introductory video, I'm gonna go ahead and remove uh, this uh, knee controller, set it off to the side, 
And uh, why don't we focus in on this area right here now, just above this beautiful badge mark. Again, this machine uh, was born uh, November 28th, 1928. And uh, it has another unique feature, which I found a lot easier to use than a lever, a traditional lever that you would move up or down to adjust stitch length. It has a little uh, thumb screw right here that if you want a longer stitch, you're going to turn it clockwise and screw it in. And if you do that, if you turn it all the way in, you're going to be doing about six stitches per inch. If you unscrew it, turning it counterclockwise, you're going to be able to go as fine as 30 stitches per inch. So really a huge stitch variation on this 1928 machine. Let me just fix this thread on top. It's a little bit distracting to me. So that's our stitch length control. Uh, you've already seen the bobbin winding. It's, it's so simple to wind a bobbin on here as you just witnessed. I'm going to go ahead and disengage that so I don't forget. Uh, coming over the top of the machine, you can see obviously this is our single spool pin for both bobbin winding and also for regular sewing. Now as I've said numerous times, because of the innovations and the advancements in needle technology, over under needles, oversized needles, even though when this machine was born back in 1928 they didn't conceive of dual needle sewing, that is a possibility now. Even though the needle plate is designed for a single needle, you can easily fit two threads through that single needle and accomplish the same type of outcome. So that is a, a, a neat uh, option that is available now because of uh, needle innovations. All right, on the back side, you can't see it real easily, but is the light. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that on now. It does an excellent job of not only lighting the bed area entirely, so you can see what's happening as you're rotating material in that, but it does an outstanding job of also lighting that needle uh, as well. Now before I move into how this machine threads, and I'm going to do it kind of a virtual threading because I obviously have it threaded right now for uh, bobbin winding, I also wanted to show you an example of what we refer to as an applique. Others are now calling them wall quilts as well, even though they're very, very small and, and, and petite. But this is a, a great illustration uh, with this uh, gorgeous strawberry cluster to show you that stitch length variation. As you're looking up here on some of the vining parts coming off of that cluster, you can see we got pretty close to that 30 stitches per inch. But as you move into these quilted areas, this is all quilted by the way, as you move into these quilted areas, you can see that we've increased that stitch length. Again, we've increased it by turning that dial counterclockwise so that we can make those stitches a lot finer. And then we also do our border work where we're probably pretty close to that six to seven stitches per inch. But the final result is just a beautiful representation of what a, a high quality straight stitch machine is capable of doing with just a little bit of creative spark. And because of the quality and caliber of this 99K13, you're just as capable of generating a project of this quality very easily because of how fine this machine is. Also, as with all of our listings, we try to include an instruction manual for two reasons. One is an instruction manual is going to uh, give you those answers that you might encounter. Even though I, I think that this 99K13 is an extremely simple machine to operate, it, you know, if you encounter a question, you simply go to this instruction manual, which you can see by the thickness of it, covers all the bases. So any question that you potentially could encounter, whether it's, well, how did Scott do that uh, bobbin winding again to, do you thread the needle from left to right or right to left? You know, all those questions are answered very, very simply in this instruction manual. The other purpose of an instruction manual uh, is, it, it, is, is it allows you to maintain that machine at an optimal sewing level. Now when you get this machine, don't even worry about that, just have fun. Because we spent about 12 hours in prepping this machine, cleaning it, conditioning it, and our approach is not just to shine it up. You know, that's, I think that that's um, really falling well short of what a complete service is. We go through the machine inside and out, we take the, the uh, tension control apart, we take the face plate off, we do all the oiling, conditioning, the timing, you name it, we do it. We get it as close to factory ready as possible. But once that routine maintenance does come due, 
This instruction manual will guide you through the very simple steps of keeping this 99K13 running at the optimal sewing level that you'll get it in. Now, let's go back up to the top of the machine. I wanted to just virtually walk you through the threading of this machine. And to do that, I'm also going to rotate this a little bit so you can see the faceplate. So coming off the top, just like we are right now for bobbin winding, you're going to come through this single thread guide right here, the same one that we use for bobbin winding. You're then going to drop down through this tension control area and then come up around the tension spring right here. The tension spring actually comes down in order to maintain te the tension on the machine versus most conventional machines where that spring tension is going to go up. So you come down through that spring around this little guide up to the arm and then you're going to come across the faceplate. You can see right there we've got another thread guide coming across the bottom of the faceplate. You then drop down through this last thread guide right here which is just above the needle area and then thread uh, the needle here from left to right underneath the uh, presser foot then obviously. And then you just rotate it as you normally would to pull that bobbin thread up. But you can see from a clearance standpoint, I've already talked about the fact and I'll show you actually with a tape measure after we get done right here. The, the clearance underneath that presser foot is equal to a Singer 201. So if you're looking for heavy duty sewing, if you're looking to fit multiple layers of quilt batting, you can fit a lot underneath that presser foot. It also has, uh, this machine has an added advantage in my opinion of having a drop in bobbin. So it's so simple to wind the bobbin as you've already seen and then if you want to change bobbin color, if you want to simply put a full bobbin in because you're in the middle of a project and you don't want to run out potentially, just pop it in and you're right back to your project work again. So, so simple. So, so simple. All right, let me rotate this uh, machine back and I want to show you a couple measurements real quick. Uh, get my tape measure here. Uh, first of all, the harp space as far as the length. Uh, if you look at the inner portion right there, I'm going basically from the needle to the pillar, which is just to the, the left of that beautiful Singer batch. You're looking at about 7 inches. Uh, depending on the uh, featherweight, and featherweights do vary whether they're made in Britain or whether they're made in the U.S., you're going to be looking at a harp space on this 99K13 that is over an inch wider than a Singer Featherweight 221. Also, Vertical clearance is real critical when you're working with turning material. Let me see if I can get this situated there. Vertical clearance is over, uh, well, it's about five inches high. You're not going to have that much vertical clearance on the Singer Featherweight either. So both from a standpoint of, of harp width, harp height, um, and also I didn't measure the harp width. I'll do that real quick. Harp width, you're looking at six and a half inches. Again, significantly wider than the harp width space you have with a conventional uh, Singer Featherweight 221. So all in all, again, in my opinion, um, I think that this 99K13 is really a huge improvement on the Singer Featherweight. You've got a 0.6 versus a 0.4 amp motor on a Featherweight. You've got a much larger harp space to deal with and to turn projects and to work with projects on this 99K13. And finally, as, as nice as Singer Featherweights are, they are featherweight. They're real light. They're only about 11 or 12 pounds. So when you're dealing with heavier materials and you're trying to turn them, uh, I've actually had people say to me they've actually tipped the machine over. This is a, a nice, solid, all-metal machine, also in a solid oak base. So when you're working with those bigger, heavier projects, it's so easy to turn them without uh, affecting the stability of the machine. So make sure you check out our other videos as well. But before I go to that transition point, let me show you one other thing. I, I've tried to take you through the full spans of what this machine is and, and really the huge advantages and the features of it. We're going to add a couple of little bonuses as we generally like to do to make the deal even a little bit sweeter. First of all, I've got this very cool uh, vintage bear. He just seemed to go with this 99K13. And not only is he vintage, but he's also musical. 
So just a nice little bonus to go along uh, to make the deal a little bit more fun. Also we're going to be adding, oh now he's really going to play. Uh, we're also going to be adding this vintage uh, sewing kit as well, just a fun little uh, singer bonus that has a bunch of little doodads in it just for fun. And it just, again, I think when you've got a, a vintage machine like this, over 80 years old, it's fun to have other vintage things that go with it just to kind of give you uh, even more of a complete package. Okay, well this again is the 99K13 and the bear is still playing music for us. Make sure you check out our other videos as well that are going to demonstrate the heavy, heavy duty side of this petite powerhouse 99K13.